In this video, we'll introduce and define the sparse coding model. So sparse coding is a model in the context of unsupervised learning. So uh, that's in the context where we have training data, which is not labeled. So we only have a set of uh, X vectors in our training set. And uh, it's going to be a model which uh, will also help us extract some interesting features out of uh, some training set. Uh, and allow us to perhaps leverage a large set of unlabeled data, see a lot of uh, unlabeled images that we extracted from the web. And uh, as uh, so we've seen before uh, other neural networks for uh, unsupervised learning. We've seen a restricted Boltzmann machine and in a encoder in the previous videos. And so now we'll look at another uh, sparse coding, uh, sorry, another unsupervised uh, neural network, which is known as the sparse coding model. All right, so the idea behind sparse coding is that for our, uh, for any input x, we want to find a latent representation, so a hidden layer ht, uh, so t is to note that it's the hidden layer for that training example, and uh, we want a latent representation that is first uh, sparse, which means that in the latent representation we want there to be many zeros and only a few non-zero elements. And uh, we also want the representation to uh, contain meaningful information about xt. And the way we're going to formulate that is that we want the latent representation to be able to reconstruct the original input uh, as well as possible. So to translate these two uh, uh, concepts that we want to implement in sparse coding, uh, we'll translate that into an objective function, uh, which uh, which we see here. So first, whoops. So first, we want to be able to reconstruct the original data as well as possible, and so for that reason, uh, uh, we'll uh, enforce xt. Uh, we want xt to be close to a reconstruction, uh, which is going to be my latent representation times a matrix of weights. And in sparse coding, we uh, usually refer to that matrix of uh, weights as a dictionary matrix. And uh, we'll see a little bit more later why we use the term dictionary. And so this we will call our reconstruction. And we want the reconstruction to be as close as possible to uh, the original input. But we also want that latent representation to be sparse. So for, because of this, we'll penalize the L1 norm of uh, the latent representation. And we've seen before that uh, we mentioned the L1 norm actually uh, uh, will force certain elements to be uh, exactly zero. So we'll achieve our, uh, our goal of getting a latent representation, which contains many zeros. And now this lambda term here is going to control to uh, what extent uh, we wish to uh, get a good reconstruction error compared to achieving high sparsity. And so these two objectives sort of fight each other. Um, the sparsity term would be very happy if all the uh, ht vector was only zeros. However, the reconstruction would be very bad. It would be always zero. On the other hand, we could get a perfect reconstruction of xt if we had no constraint of what the value of ht could be, the latent representation. However, the L1 uh, penalty here would not be happy, it would be high, uh, because presumably the values in h would need to be uh, you know, non-zero and, and perhaps fairly large to get a good reconstruction. So this is to control the trade-off between a good reconstruction and sparsity in the representation. Okay. And so that's the objective we want to optimize, uh, and we want to optimize it for each uh, training example xt. So we'll have a sum over all the training examples. And uh, notice here that the loss is, uh, requires a minimization over the latent representation. So for each xt, we, uh, want it to, uh, we want to optimize our problem such that if I try to find the best representation that reconstruct well the input and sparse and is also sparse, then the sum of the reconstruction term and the sparsity term is going to be as small as possible. And so at the uh, uh, outer loop of this sum, what we do is for all the training sets, we want to find the dictionary matrix D. 
uh, which is such that it's going to lead to a very small reconstruction and uh, sparsity uh, combined with the sparsity penalty, a very small loss for all the training examples. So that's how we're going to formulate our uh, learning problem. So uh, we're going to formulate as this optimization problem here. Um, notice that we have to constrain the columns of D somehow. That's because, uh, say we are penalizing H, if we were not constraining D in any way, uh, then we could increase the size of the elements in D and uh, decrease accordingly the uh, size of the elements in H. And that would make the sparsity term here more happy. It would, it would become lower and lower and lower. And so it could sort of cheat by transferring the size of H into D and then uh, satisfy the sparsity penalty. So to avoid this and get a badly uh, defined uh, objective, uh, what we'll do is that we'll constrain the columns of D to have a norm of 1. So all the vectors that form the columns of D are going to be on, of norm 1. Um, and uh, of, sometimes in the literature you find that people instead uh, for the constraint, they'll just constrain their norm to be no greater than 1. It's just an alternative formulation, but the idea behind it is, uh, is the same. So... Um, if, uh, if we remember uh, the autoencoder that was discussed in previous videos, well, we can think of D as the uh, equivalent of the autoencoder output weight matrix. So indeed, it takes a latent representation, and, uh, and uh, the, our autoencoder weight matrix multiplies that, and that becomes our reconstruction. So it's kind of like we have an autoencoder with a linear output activation function. What changes, though, is that uh, the way we are going to obtain a latent representation for an input is going to be much more complicated uh, for uh, the sparse coding model. So in the autoencoder, it was just a linear transformation followed by nonlinearity. Uh, but in sparse coding, uh, the H for which we'll be measuring and counting this loss is going to be the H that minimizes the sum of the loss in the sparsity term. So another way of seeing it is that uh, the h term here, uh, which depends on xt, is the argument of the sum of the reconstruction term and the sparsity term. So now, the encoding function, given some input, is no longer a linear activation followed by nonlinearity. It's the result of a more complicated uh, optimization problem. All right, so... Um, Let's talk about the dictionary. Why do we call this a dictionary and, and what does it represent? Um, so we said that the x hat, the reconstruction, is just my uh, latent representation extracted from D, which is the result of optimizing, finding the best code in terms of reconstruction and sparsity, and then multiplying that by D. That's my reconstruction. Now, because uh, this is sparse, uh, it means that many of its elements are going to be zero. And uh, so it means that we can write it, this uh, term here, as the sum over all k for which the element in the latent representation, the kth element, is not zero, of the column, the kth column of the dictionary matrix times the value of the kth element in the latent representation. So uh, if we think of this as some sort of text, then this is saying that uh, we are decomposing our text into a sum of a bunch of words, which would be the column of D. And uh, the sort of, if you want, quote-unquote, frequency of that word is going to be the uh, value of uh, the latent representation. And so for those that are zero, it's kind of like saying this document doesn't contain that word. Uh, instead of calling the dictionary elements words, we often call them atoms instead. But uh, you can see that dictionary is essentially it's kind of like a language with which you're going to try to describe your uh, inputs, uh, your observations. And uh, you're going to assume, we're assuming that each observation is a composition of a fairly limited number of these elements in my language, in the dictionary. So for instance, if uh, we run a sparse coding model of uh, images of characters, well, one thing we could get uh, so, by the way, this is an illustration from a paper by Marco Rello Ranzato um, and colleagues. So, if we had this image, then one thing we could obtain is that this image can be decomposed as the 
uh, as a linear combination of a different pen strokes. We have a pen stroke here, one like this, and one a little bit similar, another one here like that, then more like the tail of the seven, another one like this, another one maybe like that. And uh, so we see that we've decomposed this fairly complicated image in terms of pixels into a representation which just identifies which pen strokes are present uh, into, in uh, this image of a character. And, uh, and so if we think that our complex observations, which might be very high dimensional, can all be decomposed into a, a sort of language or a sparse representation where everything is just a linear combination of a, a few vectors, then sparse coding is going to be a, a good option for representing that type of data. And then now we can use the H vector, which is mostly going to contain zero except for the non-zero elements. Uh, as a representation, say, for performing classification. Um, so in certain application, uh, we'll actually know what's a good uh, dictionary to use. Uh, but in general, we'll actually want to adapt our dictionary, learn it from data, learn a good dictionary for describing our data. And so that's what we'll see in the coming videos. And uh, just to be explicit, so now these little images, they would correspond to uh, the uh, images we have here of each character, uh, they would correspond to the columns of D. And then the values here, they uh, correspond to uh, the latent representation values. Now in this example, they turn out to be mostly one, but they can, will generally value bet uh, vary be uh, between, uh, uh, they can be either positive or negative. In this example, it happens to be positive, but it can be anything between minus infinity plus infinity. It's just that, many of them, because of sparsity term, are going to be zero. All right, so that's just a, uh, uh, intuitive and, and uh, well, formal and then uh, intuitive uh, description of a sparse coding model.